Let the whole creation cry, glory to the Lord our God, and render earth the vacancy, praise to our Almighty King. Praise God, angel, most of all, and bright and fair in love, sun and moon. Lift up your voice, bright and stars in God rejoice. Servants striving for the Lord, prophets burning with the word. Those to whom the hearts belong, and their voices to the song. Powers of knowledge and of love to the glorious circle drawn in the work and all who wait sing the Lord is good and great. Men and women, young and old, praise the anthem. Children's happy hearts in this version take their part from the north to southern north, and the mighty Lord is born. Holy, holy, holy God, glory be to Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Today is indeed a day Sorry, that the... Wait, do it again. Oh, I think my mic is on now. Good morning. Now you can hear me. Welcome to worship, everyone. Really, uh, I was, I've been saying this to people as I see them. It's good to see actual human being faces and not a screen. So uh, we can all rejoice. Give a honk if you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Our neighbors will uh, maybe temporarily be mad at us, but it's a joyful noise. It's a joyful noise today. So welcome. We have a few announcements as we begin. Uh, hopefully you all are tuned in to our uh, radio station, 99.7 The Rev. That's what I'm calling it. Uh, but uh, we all, we're also calling it 99.7 The Red earlier. I think that was for Rick's a red shirt. I'm not sure. So uh, great to be in person um, following the service. Uh, if you could... Please fill out our survey today. We want to know what this experience has been like for you. Uh, we're going to try to improve this as we go. So if you're having hearing, you know, hearing problems, if it's not coming through clearly, uh, please, uh, please just let us know and we will try our best to kind of figure things out um, and, and improve each time we do this. Obviously, this is a very new experience for all of us. Um, a couple of other things, uh, if you could, we all uh, please maintain safe uh, social distance uh, standards. Uh, we want to make sure we're being as safe as possible. Obviously, in your cars is great, um, but uh, if you can, maybe uh, bump elbows during the piece and things like that. We'll be doing instructions for that as we go along. Uh, you might wonder, what are we going to do with offering today? Offering will actually be on the way out. So we'll make a reminder announcement just before the end of the service. But as but to do offering today, Rick and our other ushers will be there, with, I think, with a basket on the way out. And uh, you can just do a, a regular kind of in-person uh, cash or check offering that way. Uh, and of course, you can always still go online to www.woodlakechurch.org and click on the Give tab. That is another way you can do that um, as well. Uh, we have a couple of really fun events coming up. Uh, all the Sears Green Space here, where a lot of you are sitting already, first of all. Uh, really, really good to have you all there. Um, on August 19th, we're going to have two events going on. One is going, we're actually going to meet at 7.30, excuse me, at 5 o'clock at Donaldson Park for just a family fun event. But then later in the evening, we have a youth event going on right here where you all are sitting. We're going to have an outdoor movie night. So uh, we're just going to have some fun with that, and if you have uh, any questions or if you want to participate, all you have to do is email me, we'll sign up ahead of time, and it's bring your own food and drink. So that'll be wonderful. Um, with that, those are all of our announcements as we begin our worship service today. 
So what I would like to do is invite Laurel up here to join us in our COVID-19 uh, Before we begin, I do have one apology. I believe we ran out of bulletins at a certain point, so I apologize if you don't have a bulletin. Uh, this is one of the uh, one of the things we are learning as we go. So we'll figure out we'll get this uh, figured out in the new. So let us begin with our uh, our new litany. This is from Chris, uh, Christianity Today. Please all join me uh, in these words. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Even those among us whose souls breathe in solitude find ourselves praying in this season of pandemic for the simple graces of human connection. We live in a time to refrain from embracing. When will it be a time to embrace again? Some of us are sick and quarantined from the rest of the world. The air around us grows heavy with silence, and the door to our room or apartment or home has become the horizon of the world we inhabit. Others of us are enclosed with family and friends, but cut off from our communities. It is painful. We ache. Yeah. One of the more profound truths of the Christian theological tradition is that the community is intrinsic to the God in whose image we are created. The doctrine of the Trinity is not an accommodation for a lesser intelligence. It is essential to the nature of God and all eternity. God in God's fullness is irreducibly relational and means Image God together more fully than that. We experience the truth of our theology in moments such as these. When we laugh, when we yearn to laugh together. When we weep, we yearn to weep together. We are made for one another. In the words of Galil Gilbram, a single leaf turns not yellow, but with the silent knowledge of the whole truth. Our lives are intertwined folded together, each of us delicately implicated in one another. We cannot be ourselves apart from those whom we love. The teacher in Ecclesiastes goes on to say, He has made everything beautiful in its time. This solitude is beautiful in its time. It invites us to hear the echoes of the eternity he set up in our hearts. The time for embracing will also be beautiful, and the hour is coming soon. Until then, O oh Lord, may our season of solitude bear fruit in the lives of those we love, even those who cannot be them. Amen.
someone to proclaim him. And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful 
by the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. Well, a lot of you are too. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Immediately he made the disciples get out of the boat and go on ahead to the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Christ. All right. You, get, you, you may be seated. Go in the lawn there. I know not many are able. Uh, so this is our uh, children's sermon portion. But instead of having everybody come forward, uh, I, want, I want to give those kids a chance to get behind the wheel of their car. So we're gonna we're gonna pull, uh, play with fire a little bit here. Uh, if you got kids and they want to just get behind the wheel of the car real quick, uh, go ahead and let them do that. And if if I'm gonna let you guys honk the horn, I want just three honks on three. Ready? I'm gonna give you a second. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Was that fun? I hope you guys. You, you know, it's not often you kids get to drive the car, is it? Yeah. Yeah, if uh, if you if you're old enough to drive the car, honk your horn. Good, good, good. Now a lot of you kids, everywhere you go, somebody else is driving the car for you. And sometimes it, you think we think it's so, it's so exciting when we learn when we get big enough to drive the car and go where we want, but we're not big enough yet. We have to let someone older who's gone through training. Maybe it's your parents. Uh, uh, maybe it's somebody else. I know that our boys learned this from learned this from our, our grandpa. Whenever Mary is driving, grandpa taught them to say ah, just like that. They thought that was really funny. But when you're a little kid, someone else is always driving you around. And in our faith, we also let somebody else kind of guide us along. And that person is Jesus. We always let Jesus. Uh, guide us in our faith. And sometimes in our lives and in our faith, we need Jesus to drive the car for us and to tell us what to do. So we do things like we pray, we come to church, and we help other people because those are the ways that we know that God will guide us. So kids, uh, why don't you give one more, let's give one more honk. Let's honk three times on three. Ready? One, two, three. Good job. Man, you guys are ready to drive. What do you think? <laughs> All right, well, let's say a prayer, and then, uh, and then we'll uh, go into our quick kids. Let's pray. Holy God, we need you to drive us around. We need you to show us where our faith is. We need you to save us. We need you to love us. So, God, we pray that even though we're not always driving the car, that you would love us and that you would remind us that you keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I can remember uh, taking driver's ed for the first time. Actually, I only took it one time. For the first time, getting behind the wheel of one of those instructor cars. You guys remember that? <coughs> 
Uh, my driver's ed instructor was Mr. Goo. Uh, spelled, it looks like good, but it was pronounced Goo. Kind of fun to say. He was also the shop teacher. And for those of you who have ever taken uh, driver's ed and driven one of those cars, you know that the car has two sets of brakes, right? There's one set of brakes for the driver, but there's also a special set of brakes in a lot of these cars for uh, in the passenger seats for the instructor. And I remember getting in the car with Mr. Good for uh, one of our test drives one day. We're driving around the neighborhood, and all of a sudden, bam, Mr. Good slams on the brakes, and he goes, Neil, what are you doing? Didn't you see that stop sign? And I said, I did not. I did not see that stop sign. It was partially hidden behind a tree, but I just wasn't really actively looking enough for the rules of the road, so to speak. Another time uh, we were driving around, uh, there was a group of us in the car, three of my classmates, I think my brother and my buddy Josh, actually. So three of us in total. And I was driving, Mr. Good asked me to parallel park. And I did it perfectly, the first try, I might add. So I parked the car, and I set the parking brake, and Mr. Good uh, asks us uh, all to switch places. So my buddy Josh gets in the driver's seat, and I sit in the back, and I'm, I'm, now I'm in the back with my brother, and uh, Josh and Mr. Good are in the front with Josh driving. So Josh pulls out of our parking spot, uh, I start driving up the hill, and we turn around to go wherever Mr. Good has us going, just around the neighborhood, when gradually we start to smell something, and we realize that's the smell of burning rubber. <laughs> Mr. Good, of course, tells Josh to pull over immediately when we find out that, of course, Josh has forgotten to take off the parking brake. Now, overall, my experience at driver's ed was a good one, right? Obviously, I passed those tests eventually, and more importantly, I learned from my mistakes, although the class did conclude with Mr. Good telling my parents that I have something called a lead foot. <laughs> um, a fact that probably hasn't changed too much since then. But all of this makes me think about this idea of control, right? And what amount of it we actually have in life because there are things that we can control and there are things that we can't control, right? We learn to watch out for stop signs we remember to check the parking brake eventually. We try not to speed unless it's in our nature because it's just hard not to. But there are things that are often just outside of our control, right? We can't control if there's another drunk driver on the road. We can't control the road conditions. We can't control the endless construction projects on 35W. And then there are times when your driver's ed instruction slams on the brakes for you because you need someone to save your inattentive butt. Now the question of control is one of the primary issues in our gospel lesson today, especially for theologians, right? Recently I read an article about this text that referenced John Ortberg's book, uh, If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. Now the premise of this book is essentially, if you want to follow Jesus, you just got to get up and do something. You've got you to gotta move. But the article I read sort of refuted this idea and said, no, 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 it's never about what you do. It's always about what Jesus does. Jesus walks on water. Peter's faith in Jesus allows him to walk on water, even for a short time. It's always an act of God. So what is it? Is this story about us getting out of the boat, moving ourselves? Or is this story about what Jesus does for us? Too often, I think, this is kind of presented as a, as a binary choice, like it's either this or that. It's not that simple, though. In our faith, as in our lives, there are some things that we can, we can control. And sometimes there are things that we just can't. In our gospel lesson today, uh, Peter does not just up and decide he wants to walk out onto the water on his own, does he? The disciples first see Jesus walking towards them through the storm, and only then 
Does Peter have the courage to call out to Jesus and say, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water? Jesus always acts first. We're always responding to what God is doing. But then we do have some agency, right? Peter is the only one of the disciples who decides to get out of the boat and respond to Jesus. Peter lifts his own leg over the edge of the boat. Peter places his foot on the water. Now for us, it's the same way. God acts in our lives. God gives us life that we didn't give ourselves. God forgives us before we ask for forgiveness. God opens our eyes to see the world that is really around us. Not just the world that we want to see, not the, not the pretenses that we put up, but God opens our eyes so that we can see the world as it is. And it's here, in this moment, where we have some agency. In this moment, we can move from fear to trust. We can choose to give generously to those who have lost jobs due to COVID-19. We can continue working for justice for all people in our world. We can love people who are marginal. For a moment in time, we can trust God and step out onto the water. But Peter, like us, can't keep his eyes on Jesus forever. Not even for very long. Peter sees the waves and the wind and, like us, starts falling into the water and drowning amidst the storm. I think for most of us, if not all of us, even if we have moments of faith, tiny moments of faith, we end up drowning. Right? We come to church, we pray, we listen, we commune, and in this we have these tiny moments of faith. But once we get back into the world, we start to drown. Sometimes we need Jesus to hit the brakes for us, to save us from ourselves. And this is your story. Take heart. Take heart, because your story is the same story as the disciples. Belief is hard to maintain, and it's surrounded by doubt on all sides, and that's okay. But if you feel like you're drowning, if you feel like in all the work and the grief and the doubts that surround us in the world around, we can remember that even, even in doubt, and maybe especially in doubt, Jesus reaches out his hand and lifts us up. Jesus pulls us back into the boat and calms the storm around us. The life of faith is filled with ups and downs, highs and lows, moments of connection to God, to each other, to neighbor, and moments of separation. In following Jesus, there will be times when we think Jesus is just a ghost, and there will be times where you know Jesus is God's only son. There will be times when you will do, yes, you will do, incredible acts of faith. We've seen it over just these past few months. And there will be times, and I've seen this over these past few months as well, where people feel like they're drowning. Do you have doubts? Do you have pain? Do you have moments of separation from God? That's okay. Because Jesus reaches his hands towards yours. Because God's love for you didn't begin with your love for him. God doesn't stop loving you when your faith has been swallowed up in the winds and the waves in the water. Friends, I hope you feel God's love right now because it is for you here now. I hope you walk on water. I hope you do incredible acts of faith every day. But if you don't, know that God is still with you in the storm. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
beauty of the skies, for the love which birth, over and around us lies, rise our God to thee we praise, with its heart sacrifice of praise. For the wonder of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and farm, sun and moon and song of light, Christ our God to thee raise, gives our sacrifice of praise. For the joy of fear and For the mystic are only Thinking six to sound and sight Christ our God to thee we praise With our sacrifice and praise For the joy of human love Brother, sister, parent, child Friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts in time, Christ our God to thee we praise, is our sacrifice of praise. For each perfect gift of mine, peace on earth and joy in hell, for thyself best gift divine. Christ our God, to thee we praise, is our sacrifice of praise. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of the storms, so that we see and hear Jesus calling. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, and you, that in your steadfast love and faithfulness meet and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path of, that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish, and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, especially Barb Burton, the family of Linda Lepton, and Lynn Burton, Chinese students at the U of M who are experiencing racism in the border between. The Jones and Benson families upon the death of two cousins. The Reshke family upon the death of Jeanette. Pat Johnson's family as they continue to grieve the loss of Mary. And the Strucker family upon the death of Lorraine. Lois Erickson. The family of Greg and Jackie Nesky on the death of Greg. Jody and Tammy on the death of Father Joel. Lord, in your mercy. Here we are, Lord. For our congregation, you have gathered us here today as your people, 
And we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. So, you. so uh, for the passing of the peace today, what we recommend is, A, you can obviously in your household shake hands with people in your car, uh, but toot your horns and bump elbows with those around you. God's peace, everyone. <laughs>
This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take the survey. I believe there's a link to the survey in your bulletin. Is that correct? Yes. There's a link to a link to the survey in your bulletins. Uh, before you leave, if you could just while it's fresh, if you've got a smartphone, if you can take the survey, the survey that way, or uh, maybe right when you get home, if that works better for you. Uh, but we encourage you to do that just to uh, get feedback for us um, and keep it as fresh as possible. Um, and then the second note is a reminder about the offering. So everyone will be exiting that way. So just to let you know, we'll be exiting out onto Oliver over there. And Rick, give me a thumbs up if the uh, offering, if we're gonna have an offering basket out there? Yes. Yeah, he's got it, all right, we're good. So we'll have an offering basket out there, or a reminder, you can give online, www.woodlakechurch.org. And click, and there's a link in your bulletin, there's a QR code in your bulletin, you can do it that way. Um, and you can click on the gift tab. So the ushers will dismiss you. And the ushers will dismiss you. Anything else, Josh? The ushers will just dismiss you. So have fun. Okay. And the ushers will dismiss you. Last uh, but not least, I just want to say how wonderful it is just to see everyone's faces in person. I know a lot of us are tired of looking at screens, and I know I, I feel that way as well. So we're blessed. Yeah, let's a lot of we are blessed, blessed, blessed to be together. Um, now, with that said, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
might of God. We pray in the light of God. We are praying in the light of God. We are praying in the light of God. We are praying, we are praying, we are praying. We are praying in the light of God. We are praying, 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 we are singing we are we are singing, singing, we are singing, oh, we are singing in the light of God. We are singing, singing, we are singing, oh, we are singing in the light of God. Oh, we are singing, Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We are walking in the light of God.